Hi guys, and welcome to Managing My Money with Rosa. Today is February 13th, 2022, and I am going to go over my dividend portfolio. So my channel is dedicated to two things. One, my personal budget, and two, my dividend journey. And I'm hoping eventually to start to expand into different things to look at in your budget and different ways of budgeting, as well as looking into dividends and doing some reviews on some dividend stocks. So if any of that sounds of interest, I'd appreciate it if you take a second and hit that, put that down in the comments down below. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy this. I really would appreciate it if you take a second, hit that subscribe button. If you are a subscriber, hey, welcome back. I appreciate it. And of course, a thumbs up if you like my videos. So, <clears throat> excuse me, in my dividend journey, I have both long-term and short-term goals. And if you've been around, you know, the reason I put these down is because my husband says the same thing. If you want it to happen, you need to speak it. So I would love to have a 100,000 dividend portfolio value. I do not see this happening anytime soon, but I would love to get to that $100,000 mark. My current, currently, my portfolio value is at $3,139. That fluctuates depending on what's going on in the market. I have not been this high in quite some time. I um, usually hang out just below $3,000. Uh, it just depends, again, on where the market is and what's going on with everything. I would love to earn $80,000 a year. Currently, I'm earning $221. Definitely a huge, huge gap, but I do believe this is eventually possible. Um, I am a risque dividend investor. I am about yield. I am not about long-term growth. So please keep that in mind as you watch and listen to some of the stocks that I'm into. Um, I, someone put it once, Rosa, don't chase the yields. Well, sometimes I'm chasing that yield and sometimes it gets me in trouble. Sometimes it pays me. So $80,000 is eventually doable just because I am into high yield stocks that pay me really good uh, dividend yields. So I do see that doable. $80,000 a year would mean both my husband and I don't have to work and everything would be paid for. Um, before that happens, though, we would like for him to be able to stay home and be what we teasing and lovingly call a house daddy. He would love to not have to have to go to work. I don't mind. So I really do not mind working longer than he does. At the present moment as well, my job allows me to make more money than he does. So again, his is going to be easier to replace first than mine's going to be. And eventually, I would love every one of my positions to drip one full share. We'll talk about what drip is in just a moment if you don't know. Currently, I have 24 dividend uh, paying stocks, ETFs, funds, and only two of them give me a full share. Now, and, and that's even loaded. One is always a full share plus a little more, and the other one is just under a full share, but I'm calling it tapped out and that it get, drips one full share. So what exactly is DRIP and why do I DRIP? So DRIP stands for Dividend Reinvestment Plan. You can basically get your dividends back two ways. One, cash. I choose not to do cash because honestly, most of what I'm getting back is so little, you wouldn't even realize it. And I also don't need the money right now. I would rather reinvest. So I DRIP where the my brokerage automatically reinvests whatever it is, no matter how big, no matter how small my brokerage reinvests that back into the exact same stock that paid me dividends. So I drip because right now I'm trying to get that snowball effect going where things just increasingly get bigger and bigger and bigger. So looking long-term, I think for me, this is the best plan right now. So I also have short-term goals. Back to that, I would love to have a $100,000 portfolio eventually, but short term, I'm hoping that by December of this year, I can have a $5,000 dividend portfolio value. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know that that's going to happen because that requires me to put almost another $2,000 in. I do not see that happening. So I'm hoping that between dividend reinvesting, between dripping and 
the little bit of extra, I put about $50 extra a month into my brokerage. I'm hoping between those two things that it can get really stinking close to that $5,000 portfolio value by the end of 2022. I would love to earn $20 a month. I recalculate this every week when I do one of these reviews. And that goal is by May. I'm really, really close, 1814, based off of last week's projections. Now, one of the dividends that I do have, one of the, the stocks that I invest in did cut their dividends. And for me, it was a huge, huge cut because, and it was, it was penny. And a penny doesn't sound like a lot, but it was my one that was dripping the one full share. So as it no longer drips as much as it did, it's not going to grow as fast. And I was kind of, okay, I was really relying on it to continue to grow, to definitely hit that $20 by May. But I'm hoping that some changes and some thoughts on my portfolio and growing all of my excuse me, and growing each of my positions a little bit, which is the next goal, to grow each position by monthly. Um, I'm hoping that will get me to that $20 a month, averaged out, doesn't mean I'm gonna get 20 every month, but averaged out over a three month period, but I'll be getting $20 a month. So again, grow each position by monthly. I have changed up how I'm investing. So every time I get paid, I put $25 into my brokerage. And from there, I buy $5 in 10 of the dividend bearing stocks ETFs funds that I own in order to grow each of them just a little. And I would love to receive a dividend check every week. Now, I have been doing very good on this since November of 2021. I have received a dividend payment every single week. That's because I made some adjustments and some tweaks to some of the things I bought into some things. Again, some of them maybe I shouldn't have, some of them maybe I should have. It just depends. So that being a goal is something that I want to make sure does not disappear. So that is continuously on my short-term goals. Maybe after a year of dividends every week, I'll just leave that off. But for right now, I'm going to make sure that I keep track of that. And because that's so important to me, I actually have written down every payment that I get paid throughout the month. So I can see, hmm, did it really get paid every week? So for those of you going February 1st to February 5th isn't a full week. You're right. It's not. And that's because there were a couple of days in January that were part of that week, but I just look at it for the month, not for the week. So I got four payments the first week of February. I got two payments this week. I'll get three payments next week. I'll get one payment the fourth week and the fifth week. I'll get two payments. So some of you are counting up real quick going, Rosa, that's not 24 dividend stocks. You're right. It's not. And the reason it's not is because I don't get paid from everybody every week. Like PFLT is a monthly payer. Um, EPD is not a monthly payer. So some of these pay me, oh, T, at t is not a monthly payer. They're quarterly. And because they're quarterly, they only show up once every three months. So Yes, this is not 24. You will never see all 24 of my stocks in one month ever because this is, T won't show up for another three months. So it is here and then it's gone. And the months that I get paid the most have the majority of my funds in them. Um, so what did I get paid for the second week of February? So AGNC, I got paid 57 cents. Um, roughly $14.32.33 a share, which means that I got four hundredths of a share, not a whole stinking lot. It's really little, but I don't own a whole lot of shares of AGNC. I think I might be up to three whole whopping shares. So, hey, I'm kind of excited. I got 57 cents off of it. And then EPD, so my brokerage some days, some weeks, takes care of everything immediately. Some weeks it doesn't take care of everything immediately. So AGNC actually cleared the day that I got the dividend. On the other hand, EPD did not clear. However, I know I'm going to get $1.14 off of it. I'm not worried about carrying it over. Last month, I was very particular about, oh, I didn't get paid, so I'm not going to count it this week. I'm done with that for right now. I don't have time to keep backing up. Um, I will, when it clears, hopefully Monday, I will go in and look and see exactly how many shares I got so that I can notate it in all of my Google Docs and inside of Track Your Dividends. But 
right now, we're just claiming I got a dollar 14 because I know that it's coming, even though it's pending. Um, so what does that lead us into? What did I get paid? I didn't change the slide, so shame on me. So ignore this one, that should say week two. I'm so sorry. So what did I get paid? I got paid $1.68, that I do know I changed. So I got paid $1.68 for the second week of February. It's not a whole lot. I think I got paid $2 last week, $1.68 this week. It's not a whole stinking lot, guys. And I told you that this is not, this is why I drip because I know I'm not getting a whole lot of money right away. And that's okay. I can't do anything with it. The $2 plus the dollar, I can go to the Dollar Tree and get something. Don't know what, but I can go to the Dollar Tree and get something. Other than that, I'm really kind of stuck, but that's okay because this is growing. I'm not touching any of this money and I'm adding to it. So I'm gonna celebrate, yay, I've got $1.68 because I got paid. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, I would love to hear what your best week was if you do dividend stocks, um, just curiosity. So last week, I was to purchase, um, my last week's purchase goals were to purchase more OXSQ and $5 and at least five positions. So that $5 and five positions is my intentional growth. That is the bi-weekly. So I bought $5 into each of these. As soon as I do that video, no, I did that video, I did. So I will post a card up in the corner for you to see how much $5 bought me of each of these. Really and truly, it's not a whole lot, however, everything increased and I am watching each of these positions grow, which is so exciting because before it was just the dollar here, the 30 cents there, the 40 cents there. And now I'm watching each of them grow $5 at a time. It's not a lot guys. You don't have to start with a lot. You just have to start with research. So don't buy into something because I'm into something. You need to look it up on your own because when I talk about um, ORC specifically, ORC is the one that bit me the other day. I have a hundred something shares in it. I, what, in August, November, August, September? I think in August, I bought in a hundred shares and I dropped $500 on it. The yield was outrageous. I thought it was wonderful. And they recently dropped their dividend payment on me. So I'm a little butt hurt but you need to stop and look. Just because I'm in something doesn't mean you should be in something, but still so excited. Every one of these got $5 and then I didn't have any extra money left over. So nothing else got purchased. So some of you are going, well, what about your OXSQ? For those of you that are new here, um, I am trying to get my OXSQ up to 150 shares. I own roughly 200 or I own roughly 100 shares of it right now. I'm going to go over to trackyourdividends.com and show you all of that stuff. Um, we'll talk about OXSQ in just a second. So this is my portfolio. It I house just my dividends in here. This is not my brokerage. I input all of this information into trackyourdividends.com so that I can just get a snapshot really quick what's going on with my dividends. So right now, my portfolio is at $3,139. I'm down $105, dividend on yield, on cost, my annual income, love all of that stuff. So I'm gonna talk about ORC for just, oh, didn't wanna hit that button. I'm gonna talk about ORC for just a second. That's the one that cut their dividends on me. Um, and again, chasing yield is what I was doing. Chasing, 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 chasing. So I am down $100 in ORC right now. I'm okay with that because I know the market drops and the market rises. So I have to be careful with that. OXSQ is the other one I was talking about. I'm trying to get OXSQ up to 150 shares. Right now I own 99 because I want it to drip one full share every time. The price of OXSQ is dropping. I bought in in August, yeah, August or September, um, roughly $4.40, $4.40. Um, it's been down as low as $3.88. Recently, um, I'm contemplating starting to play bounces in OXSQ, but not 100% certain if I really want to or not. So playing with all of that. But OXSQ is the one that I'm really focused on getting up to that 150. Um, one of the things I love about this, about um, Track Your Dividends, is how I really can get a view of how many I own, 
the current price per share, what it changed for the day. I put in my average cost based off of what my brokerage told me. This will tell me real, really quick whether I'm up, whether I'm down, my dividend yield um, and my yield on cost. So if I was in at 1406, I'm not. I would be getting 9.67 instead because I'm at 1563, I'm getting 8.7%. And then it gives me a quick snapshot of my annual income. So total, not per share, this is total. I'll make $3.70 off of my two and three quarters, almost three quarters shares of Acre. So I really appreciate the way Track Your Dividends houses all of this stuff in here for me. The diversification I'm not too quite into. Um, just because it's based off of dollar amounts, not off of how many shares you own. So who do I usually use? Franco Nevada is typically my perfect example to use. I own three shares of Franco Nevada. That's it. Franco Nevada is a gold mining company from Can that's based out of Canada, and it is 13.6% of my portfolio value. And that's of that $3,000. Those three shares costs were, were expensive when I got into them, and it is still expensive. Where um, we'll use OXSQ. OXSQ is also 13% of my portfolio. You saw just a second ago, I only have 99 shares in it. Um, and it's definitely not, it, it's about the value. Those 99 shares cost almost the same as my three shares of Franco Nevada. My ORC is 13.49%. So that cost me just a little bit less than what my Franco Nevada cost me. So when you look here, you need to be careful that you understand that's not how many shares you own, but the percentage of money that you have into each one. And then we come to my absolute favorite, my upcoming dividend. So I love this view. I don't like this table. I love this view because it gives me a snapshot for every month, for every stock ETF and fund I am in as to what I'm gonna be getting paid. So part of the reason that I began investing in each of my stocks bi-monthly is because originally when I looked here, PSEC, I was getting 12 cents a month forever. And 12 cents a month doesn't grow. 16 cents a month doesn't grow. You notice it's 16 cents. So that's not a whole lot. And that is what motivated me to change up my investment strategy to instead of just buying and getting up to one full drip to changing it up to bi-monthly investing. Um, my ORC dropped, it was at six something, uh, 685 I think is what I got last month. I'm down to 596, so sad about that, but that's okay. Um, what I like here is that it gives me real quick what I'm gonna get paid each month. Now you'll notice some of them drop. Let me find one that drops as the months go on here. Maine appears to drop from 49 to 45. I don't know why it does that. Um, I just roll with it. Down at, as you continue to scroll, this is a quick monthly snapshot. Am I gonna get, what days am I gonna get paid? And then you can hover over it and find out what the value is that you're gonna get paid. These do not change yellow, orange, or yellow, green, whatever color you want to call it, until they've been confirmed. So when you get down to the bottom, it talks about the confirmed. So it tells me what it's going to get paid per share and how much I'm supposed to earn. So when we were looking at, who was it that changes main? Main drops. So until this is confirmed, it's going to stay 45 cents. But as it confirms, it comes in, it tells me. And then what, so that's March, that's next month. So we're still waiting on FDHY to confirm on a March 1 payment, Jeffy to confirm on a March 4th. Um, so my Marches are starting to wait to confirm. I've got some of them confirmed already. So like here's some Marches that have already been confirmed and that's these up here. So my March calendar will continue to fill in. All of my Februarys have been confirmed and noted on here. My March will continue to fill out as we get closer to March. Um, so absolutely love this window because it's a quick, what am I getting paid every month? And then how am I going to, what days am I going to get paid? So I like to take these numbers and drop them into a spreadsheet. <clears throat> so I can never remember them far enough. 
So this spreadsheet is something that I've made. It's one of many sheets inside of here. And it gives me a quick year to date, what I have actually earned. I have a projection based off of um, track your dividends. Um, I import this from another worksheet that I use that is actual, this is my actual income. And so I know that I've made $20.69 so far for the year. And then I even break it down into what I have made every month. So in January, I made 1697. So far in February, I've made 372. So this is how I like to track everything. You can track it whatever way you'd like. Um, what I am finding humorous and funny is the wages per hour. So my $20.69 would have earned me a penny an hour <laughs> so far this year. And I just find that absolutely wonderfully hysterical. Now, if I look at my projections, this is just for year to date. So that doesn't project out um, 12 months ago. This does project out 12 months. So I think it is funny. Hold on, I want to values only. I think it's funny that um, I'd be making 10 cents an hour based off of projections. So I like to copy this real quick to see where I started this week and then come in and change these values. Honestly, the only one I remember is the first one, which was 1650. I don't remember what the other two were. Um, 2236, 2236, 1701. Did I get it right? Yay. Um, and then hit enter. So I went from 814 to ooh, 862. So we've gone up. Um, Daily, now I'm getting 61 cents a day. Um, if we broke that down, I'd be getting three cents every hour if you were to take it at 24 seven. And oh, I made an extra penny. So now I'm making 11 cents an hour. So we're trying to get this up to replace my husband's plus a little bit more. Um, I don't want my dividends to stop growing because he becomes a house daddy. So we want this to be at least $2 above where his current pay is so that I know 40 hours a week, I know that, and he never gets 40 hours. Um, so it's a guaranteed 40 hours a week. And my, there's still money going back into my dividend to continue to grow my portfolio without me having to do anything to it. So definitely moving in the right direction. So not where I want to be. However, getting closer to my $20 goal, 40, 1862, yay! And that's because I invested my $5 in the things plus the two things that I got paid this week all went back in and are reinvesting, which is growing my account slowly but surely. Just like when I do any of my sinking funds, it's a slow, steady growth, but it is a snowball to where it just gets to the point where things are, are moving along and just absolutely love it. So next week, my goal, will I have money? So my mileage check should come in next week, which means I should be able to purchase a little bit more of OXSQ moving towards that $150 goal. Um, unless of course I sell, not certain about that yet. And then um, $5 in at least five positions, I should be getting paid. So hopefully I'll be able to move up 25 over. I'm not certain if this is gonna happen or not, just because of where my pay date is getting it all moved around, that kind of stuff. But I'm going to try to do my dividend investing. But that OXSQ, as soon as my mileage comes in, hopefully it'll be before I come back next week. So I'll say, can actually say, yes, I bought stuff. Um, I would love to hear any thoughts you have on my dividend portfolio, questions. If you have any, please feel free to put them down below. I am not a licensed broker. I am not. Um, I am just sharing my personal journey with you and how I'm moving through my dividend portfolio. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love a thumbs up, comments, and thank you so much for joining me today. Bye, guys.